<clears throat> Good afternoon, and welcome to episode number 608. The topic today is, are you crushing your dating life or hoping instead? And I'll break that down in a bit more detail <laughs> once I introduce myself. So before we jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I do these talks every day. Yes, every day. And this is Facebook Live first, also on YouTube later on. I'll give you those links later on as well. So, hi, <laughs> my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful, and highly and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. Help men too when they want to get help as well. And I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine. I'll speak about that in a moment too. Which is what inspired these talks that I do every day, called "Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart." Or I should say, "Messages for the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart." And as you can tell by the title, I'm up to episode number 608. So it's been this for a while now. And the topic again today is, are you crushing your dating life or are you hoping instead? And the sidebar, because what got my attention in that place was um, speaking about um, being a passionate champion of the divine feminine. Last night I got to be the only man in a room of 50 women, which is not, it's not the first time it's happened, but certainly reminds me just how much I love being in service to the feminine, because having that many women around me was actually very reassuring rather than scary. It doesn't mean anything more than that, just certain experience. So being, being in a room with 50 women and the only guy in there, that was kind of nice. I was actually the photographer for their event, but it was still a pleasure to be there. Anyway, to the topic at hand. Are you crushing your daily life or are you praying? Or are you hoping? I was just going to say praying. Are you hoping instead? And there's a reason why I'm speaking about this, and I'll get to that later on. But what I'm aware of is that some people approach the dating, mating, relating, relationship arena from different perspectives. Some people are those that are going to go, I'm going to date and get out there and meet some people and I'll, I'll get a relationship, I'll be fine. Like crushing it. There are also people who are wired up where they believe that the, the more dates they have, the more likely they are to find somebody special. That could take a long time and a lot of poor dates. So that's another approach. Another approach, a third approach, which is really what the second part is, is they basically sit at home with their fingers crossed and hoping they're going to meet somebody. Well, they actually might go out and do that too. But there's this, this tentativeness, this sensitivity, and like, like I, I'm hoping someone's going to show up. I'm looking for somebody. Maybe they'll show up. Maybe they won't. But I'm hoping they will. Fingers crossed, praying, and, and meditate and, and hoping. Meditating? That's different. No, different point entirely. So there's a, there's a range. There are people out there crushing it, people out there just doing the playing the numbers game, the people out there just hoping and praying. I'm going to propose a third, another option in a moment. But I want to speak to the, maybe I should say the weaknesses of each, or the risk of failing it. Thank you. Thank you, Kira. I appreciate the, the love and the support. And by the way, again, this is Facebook Live first. It goes on to YouTube later on. So people who are watching me live can actually interact. So if you're not watching me live, join me at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day because you can interact live like this. So Kira, thanks for joining me and thanks for the feedback. Um, I'm glad you love it. So if you're watching on YouTube, by the way, you won't see any of these comments. So I'm going to sort of repeat them or interact with them so you know what, I'm, what people are saying. I think that made sense. So... If you're somebody who's going to crush your dating life and you're going to go out and you're going to be really dynamic and pushy, the general misstep people do or make in their action is once they get that relationship, they give up the effort. They're out there being dynamic and forceful and making it happen and very excited and very, and very like, wow, this is amazing. And when the person who they meet sees that, they're excited by that and they love that. And then when they get into a relationship, the person who's been crushing it is going, okay, I'm good. And they just settle down into a much more um, perhaps complacent way of being. Actually, there's one option, there's another option in there too, which is a total shift from what they did initially, which makes you less attractive than what they were attracted to at the beginning, because they're attracted to your dy dynamism and your go get energy. And then when your relationship, you don't have it, they're going, where's, where they go? The other side of that is the person who's crushing it is crushing everything, <laughs> not just their dating life. They're crushing their goals and they're making things happen. And they're so dynamic, so driven. It's almost like being a workaholic. It's a crushaholic, <laughs> it's like, if there's a, a term. And I know people like this. And so everything is like in your face and dynamic and making it happen. And frankly, it's tiring to be around these people. And if you're in a relationship with somebody like that, you might feel tired too. 
So not an ideal match. So that's one of them. That's the one extreme. The other one I was talking about, well, the, the, the second one I was talking about was about playing the numbers game. Again, as I mentioned, it can be a lot of repetitive um, cycling through dates after dates after dates after dates after dates, hoping that one of them might be the right one, like wearing down the numbers. In fact, you might get to the point if you're that person who's doing the numbers game, is you're doing this again and again and again, eventually you may just say, you know what, I'm done. The next one shows up is fine. And it can be nothing like what you want, but because you're so worn out from all these numbers games, it might not be working for you. Not a good choice either. Third option, which I mentioned earlier, is about the praying and hoping. Oh, this one's fun. It's, it's certainly in the right direction because it's more inwardly focused as weird as it sounds, but when you're praying or hoping you're in your own space at the time versus out there trying to check off people or crush the dating game or out there doing other things. So you're making a step in the right direction, however, it's still missing a large piece, which I'll get to, I will get to. So the person who is hoping and praying is usually more tentative. And in fact, that's the person who's, who's hoping and praying is usually more, sent, more um, cautious, and in which case their dating may not be even that exciting. I mentioned earlier about the one who's crushing it, changing once again into a relationship. Well, if you're not being visible and being noticed when you're out dating, it may not be hard. It may be harder to actually meet somebody, and that's going to be unfortunate because you really deserve better than that. I would hope. So that's the three um, alternative paths to dating that I don't recommend. So crushing it, numbers game, and hoping and praying. Those three. I prefer. I recommend a fourth option because I'm very much on my mind right now because I'm mentioning the process where I just launched a new um, product, a new um, um, offering. And the core components of that are really focused on the inner game, the inner focus. And so I want to speak to that part so we can help you get what you're wanting because what, just to, just to be transparent, um, what I launched is Your Best Life. It's a new... Um, well, it's a new uh, modular, P modular program workbook type thing. I haven't got the proper titling for it, so that's how new it is. But I'll put the link in at the end of the, about that. But the thing about it is the components within that are very powerful for you to create what you want in your life. And the area of relationship, especially, is very helpful because it sets you up for success before you go out on dates. It sets you up for success before you even go on the dating apps. Because what it does is it rewires your circuitry. Now, it sounds fancy. <laughs> I'm not an electrical engineer, so I'm not saying it does it that way. But what it is, is a, is a, it's actually seven, I call it the seven keys to unlock your, 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 uh, your best life. Keys locks, you know, it sounds pretty fancy. But really, it's seven modules that I know work. And yes, some of them pretty well known, pretty basic. Um, one of them, for example, is about vision boards. And I, in, in this, in this, um, in this um, Your Best Life program, product, Vision boards is one of the seven pieces and it, or seven keys, and it's so overlooked by people. I would say maybe one in a thousand people have created a vision board for their perfect relationship or for any other area of their life for that matter, for their new house, the new car, new career, their whole life, their physical health, any of these things. And a vision board is a powerful component of getting clear about what you want to manifest, create and have happen in the world. So to sidebar that slightly, if you're someone who's working on physical health, sometimes it's like you don't have the energy for it, you don't have the juice for it. But you have a vision board that you've created, which is like a collage or a montage. It's collage is the right word for it, and that's part one of the seven pieces in my workbook. It is a visual representation of what you want to be like in the future. So again, taking the, taking the physical health one as a, as a guide. If you want to have a vision board, specifically one area, and, oh, well, this is one sidebar, for many people, they do a vision board as a whole life thing. I personally think it's good, at, if you've got the space for it, is to do a vision board for each area you want to focus on. So if you are someone who, for example, is working on your health, and you want to have a great, great life, and you want to be in physical shape and take care of yourself, you would, I recommend you do a vision board just for that area. And of course, for a relationship as well, because that's the one I was talking about initially. But let me just do a sidebar for the health one for a, for a moment just to show you a different viewpoint. So the vision board is something that, first of all, for most people forget to do this one thing, and I'm gonna tell you what it is, I'm not gonna hide it from you, but it's in, my work, in, it's in the guides, guidance I provide, is a vision board must have a picture of you on it. Most people have vision boards on their walls if they do have them, and again, one in a thousand people does a vision board. Well, one in a million maybe does it right. 
So if you're one of the people who's not doing it right, here's some clues. First of all, you must have a picture of yourself on the vision board because then you're in the picture, literally and, and, in, and energetically. The vision board, vision board for health would be decorated with all these different things that would be ideal. So it might be pictures of people like that, that maybe look like you or you feel like you. It doesn't have to be exactly the match, but look feel like you. That they're running or cycling or swimming or exercising at the gym or just laying on a beach in perfect shape, whatever that is. But having images that are on the vision board are ideal ways of accelerating the process to get where you want to go. So again, if physical health is your goal, a vision board that's around that area works really well. If it's about relationships, a vision board that has pictures of the scenes you want to play in. Maybe it's a couple in bed, a, maybe a PG version, depending on who's around your life. But if it's private, do whatever you want. But it could be a, a couple walking down the street or sitting in the park or going on a vacation together. Or it could be the person you're looking to be in relationship with, if you're a woman looking for a man, maybe you see him, the picture of him saying, on his knee holding out a ring. You, create, you find pictures that fit the vision you want, the energetic, the feeling you have. And by having a vision board, it adds to the toolkit. And again, this is one of seven things that I teach in my Your Best Life pro, uh, pro, program, product. It's not a program per se. It's not like a modular. You basically get the whole thing and you work on it. It's so clunky the way I say that. <laughs> so whatever area of your life you're putting energy into, one of the things I recommend of the seven is to do a vision board for it. It could be about money. It could be about health, about relationship. Could be about adventure even or traveling so pictures and also i've got the other piece is affirmative statements and words now if you're somebody who doesn't get a lot of magazines because magazines are feeding out a lot ideally magazines are better but if not just do google searches on a computer sorry do web searches have to be non have to be platform agnostic um web searches for images and the and the thing you're looking for images and romance images and health images and fitness images and travel whatever that focus is and find images you can find on the web, print them out on a color printer, or take them somewhere you can print them out, and then stick them on a vision board, because the vision board has more energy when you're physically interacting with it. Now, I have done a vision board on my computer before. Not quite as powerful, but it's done where I had a virtual cork board and I had stuck images on there and I put words on there as well. It helps because it's on my laptop so I can see it every time I boot up my computer, but a physical vision board I know from experience has even more power. So that's one thing I recommend if you're doing for a relationship um, if you don't want to do crushing it or praying for it, starting with a vision board is a good place because it puts you in tune with your intention. And I talked about this at the beginning of the year, how intentions are way more powerful than resolutions. Also, intentions are not date specific, meaning they don't have to be the beginning of the year. And as we're now at the end of January, it's a good time as any other time to bring them out. So setting up intentions for what you want to create is a powerful place. And the vision board is really a visual affirmation of that intention. So don't ignore them. I recommend them highly. So that's one of the seven. Um, I'm going to give you a second one. Yeah, I'm going to give you a second one. I'm a big fan of gratitude. <laughs> Sounds so silly to say that. But if you're someone who's out dating and you're not having a lot of luck, you may be spending time cursing and hating the fact you're not getting dates that work for you. Maybe you're feeling like there's no good ones out there and you're just fed up with it. Well, what you're telling yourself is there are no good ones out there. And you don't want to affirm what you don't want. So one of the ways around that, rather than saying, oh, damn, I have to change my language and affirm it, which is, yes, you can do that. But one of the simple things you can do, and I recommend this highly, I've, I've talked about this before, and again, it's in my program, actually, I recommend um, a gratitude jar. In fact, hang on one second. Get behind the camera here. Because I'm doing my own one. Ta-da, gratitude jar. <laughs> so this is my own, um, for my own purpose, because I'm, doing the, I'm actually running the process myself but a gratitude jar or a gratitude journal that you can use to affirm and, and thank yourself for what you've been through for the day, for the process, is a powerful tool, additionally to the vision board and a bunch of the other ones, things I talk about, to set your energetic state towards where you want to go. A vision board sets up an attractant to draw you where you want to go visually. A, a gratitude jar works on the feeling level to really fill you up from inside. Because again, if you're someone who's been out on lots of dates or if you're going to the gym and you're not feeling fully aligned to your physical health, you might start judging or doubting. Like you, if you overeat one day and you go, oh damn, I shouldn't have done that. And you judge yourself and you curse yourself out. That doesn't help you where you want to go. If you had a bad date in the dating arena and you're not getting what you want there, judging yourself is tempting, but not recommended. So a gratitude jar, as I mentioned, or a gratitude journal to put in the jar or write in the journal at least three things at the end of the day. If you do three things in the morning as well, it's even better. 
that simply are gratitude for things that happen. Maybe you got out of bed on time. Write that down. Because the simple action of gratitude is like a switch. It turns on the juice inside. And having gratitude for your life in general helps you put focus and more energy into the things you want specifically. So again, if your dating isn't necessarily working the way you want, having a gratitude process... No, you're not? What do you mean, no, you're not? I'm not sure what you're saying there. J uh, j is it Jiten? Sorry, you said... You said something, no, you're not. I'm not sure what you're, what you're answering or speaking to. Um, having gratitude for what you have in your life. Maybe you had a great breakfast. Maybe you got to hug a friend. Doesn't have to be massive stuff. You say, well, I've got the new contract. That could be great. But why not be grateful for every little thing? And again, minimum three, maybe five, at least in the evening and as well in the morning if you can do it. Because when you do that, oh, not hoping. The question, oh, the question of the live video. Thank you. I wasn't sure what you were responding to because that was, I was way beyond that now. <laughs> Thanks for joining me, by the way. Yes. Um, so having gratitude for what happened in your life is absolutely fundamental for having a better life in period because there's a, a statement in spiritual principles. Kira was saying, everything that you're sharing makes so much sense and so simple. Such an, ava such an available elements to add to dating life. You're very welcome, Kira. This is my focus. This is my work. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I've got, well, plus this one, 608 talks about this stuff. So I'm absolutely here to serve and help. So you're very welcome. And I mentioned that I'll put the link in at the end when I sign off for the um, Your Best Life um, piece because it has extremely simple, like these, again, vision board, gratitude, gratitude jar, are two, of the, two of the seven elements that will help you get what you want to get in every area of your life. It can be focused on relationships, focused on health, focus. it's actually, um, in the introduction, I think I have is 10 or 12, I believe, different spokes of life. I've got, I've got I have a wheel of life I've created, which is a 12 spokes. And you look at which ones you want to focus on. And you can use it for any one of those, or all of them. So, again, gratitude, vision boards are just two of the seven elements I talk about in, in your best life. And you can apply it to your relationships. So, oh yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> okay, you didn't know that. Date, date's coming up soon. Well, good, I'm glad you're having some fun there. Just, just, I'm going to say jiten, I'm not sure if it's jit, je, or je, or something else. But yes, so, um, thank you. Um, one more thing I was trying to say there. Yes. So again, just to recap briefly from the beginning. First of all, crushing it isn't the focus that works really well. Playing the numbers game doesn't work either. And nor does um, praying and wishing. Having an intention first. Jatem. Very nice. Okay, so now I know. <laughs> Thank you for sharing your name there. Now I appreciate that. Um, and again, if you watch us on YouTube, you've got no idea who I'm talking to. <laughs> this is the fun part of doing a broadcast on Facebook and then putting it onto YouTube. Say la vie. I've done this so many times, I should be used to it by now. Having a clear intention of what you want, having a reference point of how that feels, filling up your own tanks with self-love, self-support self and gratitude are powerful keys. All of these things I'm talking about are not just about, okay, we've well, just got to put the right makeup on and the right clothing and look resentable on the date. This changes the energetics so that when you go on a date, you really feel aligned to who you are. And frankly, if you're looking to have more than just meet somebody, have sex one night, as you're looking for a healthy relationship, being aligned to who you really are makes you more attractive and helps you get what you really want. That's why I'm passionate about this. So having said that, um, actually I did mention self-love, didn't I? I'll put the link to the self-love practice in there too, just because, just because. Um, <laughs> one of those days I've been so immersed in creating the, this Your Best Life, I just put up the webpage today, very clunky, but I put the link in so you can browse on it. it, it the program's a lot better looking than the web pages. Um, that voice. Are you on radio podcast? No, I'm not. Um, I've been told to be on radio many times, but that's not my that's not my energetic, not my focus. That's why I've done these Facebook lives. It's a vehicle through which I've been able to talk many, many times. Sometimes to nobody, sometimes to hundreds of people. That's a way of sharing my message. But I'm definitely gonna be on stage this year, speaking in front of audiences. That's my focus and my that's my stretch goal for this year, to to be speaking on some live speaking in front of live audiences on stage. Because this is easier on camera, as fun as it sounds. Speaking in front of 50, 100, 200 people on stage, that's going to be a stretch. So, um, to wrap this up, I'll put links in the comments that I mentioned, and I will remind you, support you, and invite you to look at dating or relating or mating differently than I've, the new, those ones I, rec I said won't work. Because if you are crushing it, playing the numbers, or hoping and praying, it will not support you. You might get some results, 
but you'll burn out or you'll suffer or you'll lose out or you'll just not be happy when you get there. Having a vision, having an intention, having energetic focus on what you want to create before you go on a date will set, up, set you up for success and that's what I would recommend. If you rip the audio from these, you have a whole whole other audience. Well, actually, Jatem, just so you know, um, and I'll give the links in a moment, I actually have taken some of the audio, some of the track, some of the early broadcasts, taken the audio off and put it onto my podcast. So I have a podcast on iTunes. So you're all, I'm way ahead of you, sort of, kind of. And speaking of which, let me give you the links for those so you know where to find me. If you haven't joined my Facebook Live online, f- sorry, my Facebook Live live, you can join me on a 5 p.m. Pacific time every day on Facebook, and that's at facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. Make sure you follow me and you find it out. Um, any tips for a real life blind date? Um, <laughs> interesting question. I uh, would say the best thing I recommend is be yourself first. Um, and be honest because the thing is when you go on a blind date especially if it's done by a friend of yours well, I've been on blind dates through a dating app that was even worse um, being real honest not judgmental not insulting but honest and there's a very clear difference so be caring because the thing is also about it is remember the person you go on a date with it's their blind date too so be kind so be kind be honest um and be real. That was, that was the third one I mentioned it. But you got you got feedback. So that's what I recommend if you're going on blind dates. Um, yeah. <laughs> that happens less and less now with dating apps. Although sometimes with dating apps, and I've done a rant about this before, what you see is not what you get. So um, dating apps do actual blind dates. Well, there's a thing. A lot of blind, a lot of dating apps, the people who put their profiles on dating apps don't represent themselves very well. As in, they may have pictures from 10 years ago or pictures with somebody else and you can't tell who it is. I've seen some interesting pictures on dating apps. Yes, I do peruse them sometimes, actually quite regularly. The challenge with dating apps is you're based upon, someone's putting a presentation of who they are. I've seen people's dating apps where they have five pictures, every single one has sunglasses on. So I can't even see their eyes. So I don't know what they look like, really. I've seen dating apps where there's a picture of a flower, no picture of a person. Then it is a blind date. So dating apps don't guarantee that the person you're gonna meet is really the person you look for online. That's why I'm not a big fan of dating apps per se. That's why, again, start within first what you're looking for and then see what matches out there. So some dating apps do... Oh, sorry, you know, I was just asking the question. No, it was a matchmaking service that was um, inviting me to be one of their clients and they put me on blind dates. So yes, it was actually a matchmaking service, not a dating app. My, I didn't I just realize what you were talking about there. But yeah, so there's another question. So where am I based now? And Are you dating a relationship at the moment? Does that matter as a dating coach? I talked about that yesterday. Actually, I talked about it two days ago. Um, yeah, I, I have, and as I've shared before, and I shared again, just so you know, for those people who, ask, who may be in, intrigued, I'm based in Los Angeles. Um, I'm not dating a relationship right now. I haven't been for a while, and it doesn't matter as a dating coach because I'm speaking from experience and also speaking from 30 years of study. I've got um, I've got a best-selling book out, other coaching, and having 600, and, as of this one, 608 different Facebook lives about love and relationships. I think I know some stuff by now. <laughs> so if I was in a relationship I might have more nitty gritty stuff about that relationship but about general dating a relationship it doesn't matter if I'm single or in a relationship just the stuff I've learned stuff I know and and stuff that I've experienced viscerally that I can help with so hope that helps so having said all that replays my personal page is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby where the live broadcasts go out at 5pm pacific time every single day once in a while they shift because of schedules but usually it's 5pm pacific time Replays are on my business page on Facebook as well as on YouTube and podcasts. I'll give you the links for those. On um, my business page, it's facebook.com forward slash barryselby.author. Please like my page and follow me there. And also, I'm putting them onto my YouTube channel, as you may be watching on YouTube, which is youtube.com forward slash user forward slash barryselby. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and then you can um, find the playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine. And also, there's the same name as my podcast, which you can subscribe to on iTunes called Message for the Masculine, which is the audio versions. And there's about 40 of them up there so far. There's more coming. Um, Jatan, what are you saying? If you weren't a dating coach, what could you be doing? Um, I mean, what we could be doing? I'm not, actually, I'm not a dating coach. I'm a relationship attraction expert. I hate the word coach, and I don't, I'm not, I'm not really focused on dating. I help, dating's part of the picture. But I'm focused on getting people into really healthy relationships. So, um, GMT times? Oh, I am. This is 5 p.m. Pacific time. So, 
that would be would that be one no three three a.m no that's not right one a.m one a.m uk time so gmt time so you'll be watching the replays. I mean, you're up, if you're on, unless you're up late, like you are now, if you're watching me from England. Um, um, you mean what I mean? What you mean? Well, it's first, I think it's your first time tuning in. I haven't seen your name before, so nice to have you here. Thanks for being with me. So yeah, I'm, I'm West Coast California, so I go 5 p.m. Pacific time, which unfortunately is um, right now is 1 a.m. UK time. Yes, I know my da my dad's there. So I do know the time zone difference because when I'm calling, I have to call early in the day. <laughs> so, all right. So replays, I've only where to find that. Um, I'll put the links in the comments for your best life and self-love practice. And if you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below and I'll, sign off. I'll respond when I sign off. If you're watching on YouTube, same thing applies. And if you feel like sharing with anybody you think you should watch this, please share it away. And with that, I will see you again tomorrow, same time, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Sorry, to tell you, it's going to be a, it's going to be late for you. But if you want to watch live, you can do that or watch it the next day. Again, I have a whole archive on my business page and on YouTube. So if you want to watch any of my recordings, they're all there for you to comment on, look at, and enjoy. So with that, I thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye.